All right, welcome to this afternoon's game. This is a different take on one of our favourite scenarios. This is uh, 1815. Uh, the Prussians are defending the Charleroi River crossing. Uh, and uh, we've got a defensive force uh, of Prussians who are falling back in front of the advancing French. So Dan is commanding a Prussian um, cavalry brigade. So we've got a large regiment uh, of Prussian dragoons. Uh, 10 bases strong, so 30 figures in that unit. We've got a Prussian horse artillery battery deployed on the French side of the river, defending the road. And we've got a slightly smaller but still standard size regiment of Landwehr lancers. And you've got the brigade commander down there. So that's Dan's first force. And then Dan also commands a reserve infantry brigade. I need to get a commander out for it. But we have two battalions uh, of Berg infantry fighting in Prussian service. Charlie is taking command of his favourite forces. So he's got a reserve medium artillery battery. These are nine pounders on the hill. He's got a regiment here, three battalions of Landwehr, Westphalian Landwehr, again, all regular sized units. And regular sized units in the village here. Uh, these are, again, commanded by Charlie, three battalions of regulars and an enlarged skirmish screen with some Free Corps Jaegers uh, uh, supporting that screen. So uh, this is how the battle will start. The French are not yet on the table. They've got some scouts. We've got two regiments uh, of light cavalry, two regiments of hussars. They are backed up uh, by the Empress Dragoons, who are also available as reserves for the French, and a substantial number of infantry battalions. Anyway, the French scouting screen is approaching the river crossing, and the Prussians are seeking to deny them access. Let's see how the game goes as we move on with the first turn. Right, so we've completed movement. Uh, Charlie's moved his land there forward, still occupying the hill. He's redeployed uh, his um, horse artillery back across the river. Um, they are still limbered. We've seen some minor formation changes by the reserve infantry brigade and the uh, Prussian cavalry have stepped back uh, towards the river line. The French light cavalry have moved forward and are now on the hill. They've brought up a horse artillery battery in support and their first infantry brigade has arrived uh, and its supporting artillery uh, is also just off table. So that's where we are on the first turn. Let's see, we'll see if there's any firing and come right, back. We're going to get some firing from the turn. The Prussians are opening fire with their nine pounder battery on the hill here, firing up across the valley at uh, these French hussars on this hill. That'll be firing at long range. Let's see what we get. We roll a seven, that'll be half a casualty at long range. So roll a four, five or six and that converts. Oh, it was nearly a six, but roll back to a two. So no casualties from that firing. The French will also think about firing with their horse artillery battery, but they have moved and unlimbered this turn. So um, I think, I think they will have a go. They're gonna fire against the large unit of Prussian Dragoons. Just to their front. So the French did quite well. They rolled a nine with a minus four adjustment that comes to five. So we have caused one casualty on the Prussian goons. All right, let's move on to turn two. Roll for ADCs and see who gets the initiative in the second round of combat. All right, so I had the opportunity to counter charge with my hussars, but given he's a large unit and has double, has he got double my frontage? No. He doesn't have double my frontage. But anyway, I've decided not to counter charge with my hussars. Um, I'm going to do my defensive fire with my horse artillery battery and use my hussars as a support. So first thing, uh, and we'll see whether this was a wise choice, I fire my guns at close range against the attacking no. cavalry. So I roll a three, so that'll be a fatigue casualty, but I do cause two more casualties uh, with the artillery dice, rolling two fives. All right, now let's see what the charge result is. Okay, so the Prussians took two casualties, but unfortunately I took two casualties from uh, the fatigue uh, for the rapid firing of those guns. So we're deeming that is part of the charge result. So let's roll, see how we do. 
the French get a seven. And the Prussians get a four. The French are going to re-roll the one for their supporting hussars. So the French are on a nine. The Prussian dragoons are on a four. The Prussian dragoons go to a five because you are net plus one because you've got your commander committed. But that is a minus four result. So uh, cavalry versus infantry. Cavalry take one more casualty and retire. So you will fall back 21 inches. Right, so successfully having thrown back the dragoons, the other unit of uh, French Hussars are now committing themselves to charging the Landwehr cavalry. Let's see how they do as they try and charge right, in. Right, so French Hussars charging in. They'll be on plus two here because they've committed their commander to this combat and they are battle cavalry. We've rolled a nine. Let's see what the Prussians get. And they roll a five. So nine goes to an 11 against a five. I win by six. That's pretty impressive. So charge result at plus six. So victory, defenders route and take 1d6 casualties. So roll up your casualties for your Landwehr cavalry down. You only take one. So you take one casualty and you'll have to fall back 21 inches and that will be a full to test for your cavalry brigade. So well done, the first hussars for the French. All right, so the French are uh, really focused on this. We've got a, uh, a falter test on this Prussian cavalry brigade, which is a strong brigade. Uh, the first roll was indeed a two. Uh, they have two ADCs allocated, so they do get a re-roll. Dan, let's see what the re-roll is. A five. I think that means uh, obey orders. So the Prussian cavalry stays in the fight as we move into turn three. Okay, so the Prussian cavalry have fallen back. The uh, Lancers have formed up in front of their artillery battery and the Dragoons have uh, manoeuvred so they can't be hit in the flank. We're expecting some firing from the Prussian guns as, the, as we move on to that stage of the turn for the French. Their infantry brigade on the left has moved forward and their Hussars have moved into a, a formation to potentially charge across the stream. The Hussars down here. Uh, have moved forward slightly and we do have artillery assault off on our horse artillery battery and our first main artillery battery of the French army has deployed onto the hill. So we'll start with some artillery first. The Prussian guns on the hill will open up. All right, so the Prussian guns opened up and caused a casualty against the French Hussars and they got some bounce through against the infantry battalion behind and they caused a cavalry uh, casualty with their skirmish screen on the French skirmishers that are just ex exchanging fire with them across the river line. We'll now open fire with our horse artillery battery against the Dragoons, probably at effective range. Another terrible roll for the French, uh, for the Prussian, so, no, for the French actually. So this is not such a bad roll. No casualties from the artillery dice, but 10 from the basic fire result. So at effective range, that's three casualties and a discipline test on the Dragoons. OK, so in turn four, the French uh, have got initiative uh, and they've gone all aggressive. So both units of Tsars are charging into the Prussian cavalry. Let's see if they can clear this side of the river before the infantry assault comes up. So for my first Tsars against the Landwehr cavalry, um, I get a plus one for being battle cavalry and the Lancers get plus one for having the commander attached. Uh, I attach my commander to my fourth Tsars. Uh, the French get a seven. The uh, Prussians get a six. Um, so that's just a straight plus one. So on cavalry versus cavalry, we just go into combat. All right, so we'll have a melee at the end of this turn. Let's do the second charge then. Um, down here, the um, Dragoons have taken seven casualties. So they're on minus one. Um, the Hussars are um, battle cavalry. So they are on minus one. Um, I've got my commander. Have you got your commander, Dan? No. All right. So it's plus one to the French because uh, because they've got a, a commander uh, and our battle cavalry and uh, the Prussian dragoons are simply minus one because of their casualties. All right. Let's roll off. Plus one to the French. The French get a pretty disastrous five. So they're on a six and the Prussians get a five as well. So both of the results are the same. Both uh, are a net result of plus one uh, to the French and both will just go into normal melees. That at least saves these two units from, cab from artillery fire from the French. All right, so the uh, French cavalry's got stuck in trying to push the Prussians back over the river. 
their first attacking brigade is just reaching the river line. Down here, their second attacking brigade is now approaching the table and their artillery will open up both batteries to open fire, probably counter a battery fire against the Prussian battery on the hill. Let's see how they do. The Prussians have had a disaster. Dan managed to roll a double one on his discipline test, having taken four casualties, which was some amazing counter battery fire from the French this turn. So uh, that means a retreat result and that battery will disappear from table. Okay, so first combat of the turn, the uh, fourth Hussars against the uh, second uh, Prussian Dragoons both get five dice. So really important what this one under the tree was. That's a three. So the French have caused three casualties. Two. You've caused two. So you get the option to fight on or not. Given that you can't retreat across the river, I think you're going to have to take the option yeah. of fighting on. Let's mark up those casualties. I just check that result. <laughs> good, good, good. This could be quite bad for the Prussian system. So, so I th we think technically the Prussian dragoons actually did lose that. They have to retreat. Uh, they can't retreat because they have their backs to the river. So I think potentially they're wiped out. But we've decided that feels a bit unsportsmanlike, especially given the size of the Prussian unit, and they only lost by one casualty. So we're going to allow them to fight a second round of combat as they have the backs to the river. So the Prussians would start with five dice. They gain one for being a large unit, that's six, but they lose two because they're now on 10 casualties. So they'll be on four dice and the French are still on five. Let's see how the French do. The French again cause three casualties. We cause two. And the Prussians have caused two. So I think the Prussians lose the second round of combat and are probably at this stage wiped out. Right, so the Hussars did wipe the Dragoons out uh, to the last man. They've, uh, they've been swept away into the river the second Hussar charge goes in across the river against the, the uh, Prussian Lancers who just formed up on the other side. Let's see how the French do in this one. Much worse, only one casualty for the French and four, and four for the Prussians. The French are defeated and this unit of Hussars is robustly thrown back. All right, so let's roll the full to test. Firstly, for the uh, Prussian Lancers, what are you going to get, Charlie? You get a three. You do have a re-roll if you want one. A three, I think, is a fallback. You have to keep taking um, falter tests. On a three, you retire. So uh, on a retire, uh, you would have to go back 18 inches for the Lancers. Uh, and if you're retiring, you remain faltering, yeah. A one, savoir qui peur. The Lancers are gone. Uh, perhaps you should have stuck with the falter result. All right, now let's roll for the French Hussars. They get a two. Uh, they're going to roll again. They get a six. The brigade obeys orders. All right, so the French stay in the fight, but the Prussians have lost all their cavalry. All right, on turn seven, the French have moved their cavalry back forward to force uh, some of the Prussians to take a more defensive formation. So the Berg infantry on the right have formed square. All the others are in column. We've moved our horse artillery back to the river bank. Um, this brigade, unfortunately, is hesitant, so won't be able to join the attack yet. But the attack on the left, we have infantry assault off, and they're starting to move across the river line. Um, French had initiative, didn't they, this turn? Is that right, guys? Yeah. Okay, so the French artillery open fire at long range against some of these targets. All right, so these two French artillery batteries are opening fire against the land there at the edge of the village. So you roll a four. That'll be nothing, will it, Charlie? It'll be fatigue, won't it? No, but a three will be. <laughs> so that's a fatigue casualty. So that artillery was particularly ineffective. Um, and that will be it for that firing. And then we've got two shots from our skirmish screen against the Prussian skirmishers and uh, cause no casualties. Prussians to open fire back. Your skirmish screen, Charlie. Three dice for those against the French skirmishers. Uh, that's one more casualty against that French skirmish screen. They had taken three last turn, that's why there's no casualty counter, so put that onto one. And they can fire at the guns, so that will be two, two shots possibly. Wow, double six, and that does cause a discipline test on the gun. That's a bit disappointing. They're nine, so they are fine, but I can't do artillery assault anymore on this horse artillery battery. Should I do K5D's bullet against them? Uh, I think 
Uh, I think it's out of range, but we will just check the range. So in turn eight, the French assault started to go in. So three battalions have assaulted the village and the French hussars have just across the stream against this land there. First, it will be defensive volley from the, from the village itself. Three shots, Charlie. One casualty on one of the attacking French battalions. Half effect. Half effect from the column. A nine, that's not too bad. We'll just work out what the nine does. All right, so uh, uh, the volley from the village caused one casualty on the attacking column and the volley from the land there caused a casualty on the hussars and caused a discipline test. They did roll, I think it rolled a double six, certainly rolled a high number. So the, we're on to charge resolution for the hussars as they charge in. So the hussars are grenadiers and battle cavalry, um, but they are charging against infantry in column. So the infantry get a plus two, and I've got six casualties, so it'll be plus three net modifier to the land fare. Let's see how we do. Yes, I'm sure you'd have picked that up, Charlie, <laughs> um, if, I, uh, if, if, you, if that had been a one. But anyway, we'll let it stand. You've got a nine, I've got a two. That's a minus six. So I will take one D3 casualties and the Hazars retreat, and somewhat disastrously, they take three casualties. So the land fair, hold firm, and the square is still in Charlie's hands. Okay, so the left-hand French brigade continues their assault against the village. The land fair are moving up in close support. Down here in the centre, my other French brigade is now closing in, following up the route taken by the Tsars to try and seize that crossroads. And my skirmish screens on both flanks have moved in. French go first. First, we'll do some long-range artillery fire. Uh, we'll target the land fair again in the centre. Let's see what we can do. A long range shot, a nine, Charlie, that's a bit better than last time. That is one casualty and a discipline test against the Landwehr Battalion. And the other battery does a five, which is half a casualty, which doesn't convert. So only half a casualty. So one casualty on the Landwehr. Have you done their discipline test? Yeah, I've got a blend. You've got a blend? A ten. A ten, all right. And then our horse artillery, which are at minus one, will fire at the... Uh, Berg Infantry, we do get a plus one combat dice because they are in column and at effective range. So let's see how the French artillery does here. We roll, we get one from the combat dice and we roll a five at effective range. So that's two casualties on the Berg Infantry. All right, then the French skirmishers will open fire. They're gonna fire at the Berg skirmish screen. That'll be three dice. No, no casualties, and then two dice from three dice from my other skirmish screen against your guys in cover. I lose one dice because they are in cover. No effect from that. So French, French firing not overly effective this turn. Let's see some counter firing from the Prussians. Do you want to start, Charlie? So I'm rolling against them. Minus against two. this, what are you firing Skirmishes. at? Um, you can shoot through to the unit behind if you want, and the first casualty will go on the skirmishers. It's up to you. No, no. Okay. So you get a nine at uh, effective range. Let's just check the status of those troops. They might be veterans. Okay, so Berg, Berg skirmishers firing, and they do cause a casualty. They did better than the whole mass of They did the better than all of mine put together. Yes, you're right, Charlie. <laughs> all right, uh, you have no artillery, so that is it. So that's firing done. Now hand-to-hand -hand combat in turn eight as we fight for the village. Okay, so the French are trying to drive into the village. Let's see how many casualties they cause. Not great, only two. Oh my God, the French are thrown back and the Prussians hold the village. That was an absolutely great result from the Prussians. They really should not have done that well. Brilliant dice rolling by Charlie there. So four casualties to the Prussians. So that whole regiment of that uh, French brigade has been thrown back, bounced off uh, their attack on the village. Doesn't look like that one will go in next turn either. And there'll be a fort test as that's two retreating units in that brigade. That's it for turn eight. Let's move on and do turn nine. All right, turn 10 is getting quite close. Uh, artillery fire was pretty ineffective for me, um, just caused a couple of casualties on uh, the skirmisher screens in the Prussians. We have reformed our infantry 
We're now getting ready. Let's see if we can do some sorts in. Turn All down. right, so uh, we're assaulting the village again. The left-hand brigade, the two battalions that weren't committed to the assault last time are going in. The brigade that's coming across towards the crossroads has also gone into the village. I've moved my skirmish screen across to put some pressure on the uh, Berg infantry. Uh, we're now just doing some defensive fire. Charlie, you're opening up first. You're doing a volley with your regulars behind the hedge line, yeah? yeah. At my which attacking column? The one with the white flag, I think, yeah? Uh, yeah okay you can do passing fire against it it will be through a skirmish it will be <coughs> through a skirmish screen so it will be at minus two not minus two it'll just be casualty first no because i'm more than three inches oh no there yeah, first casualty goes against it so ten. a 10 at effective range is one casualty on the skirmish screen three on the attacking battalion and a discipline test which we pass And then defensive fire against all the village. I'll do space they're both going okay, in. so two against the white flagged one because that was the one, as you yeah. said, that attacked first. So I'll roll two on its own. This gets mm -hmm. white flag. Okay. One casualty and against the red flag. No. Nearly caused a modifier. So have we got a casualty marker spare anyone? All right, the Berg infantry are firing against the skirmish line. So that's a six after modifiers. That's one casualty against the skirmishers. They column. lose a base. Column against them. Uh, against the skirmishers, yeah, you can do. So standard volley. Nothing. No, that will be nothing. Okay, and then so you can fire skirmishers against the artillery. That does nothing. All right, now it's for some French return. Firing our skirmishers against the Berg infantry. No, they do terribly. There's nothing there. We're going to fire the artillery against the Berg infantry as well. Um, this will go through the skirmish screen, so that's a bit of minus two on the skirmish screen. So that's a five at close range. Uh, it's going to be one casualty on that skirmish screen. Oh, they're nearly broken down. They're nearly broken. Uh, and then my skirmish screen against the fusiliers uh, behind the hedge. One more casualty against the guys behind the hedge. And then my long range artillery fire will fire at the land fair on the hill. We get a seven, which will be half a casualty, and a seven. So that's two half casualties. Do they convert? No, neither of them do. So the artillery fire is pretty ineffective. Let's do the assaults on the village. Five against eight dice. Can the French do better this time? Will the Prussians still Maybe hold on? How many have you done? Three. And the French have done three. All right, let's mark those casualties up and let's... See what All right, now uh, French throwing three battalions in, but we have three battalions of uh, um, Prussians defending. Um, how many? First one was none. Okay. Second one is one. Um, yes. Oh, and that's better. So that's five. Okay, and then I've got four for my first one. That's one. Whoop. Then five for my next one. That's three, and then five for the last battalion. That's three, so it's five. So that's after the second round of combat. Both of us take five casualties. Right, lots of charges in turn 11. These two infantry battalions have gone in against the fusiliers behind the hedge line. Two more French battalions that weren't part of the retire have charged in against the village, and Charlie has charged his land fair against one of the supports. So let's do this in order. We'll start with the French charges first. So defensive fire by the Green Baton Battalion. How many casualties have they taken, Charlie? Only three. Only three. So they're all right. So they can shoot this turn then. So you get an eight. Uh, standard volley is three casualties against that attacking battalion. They're on seven now. Okie doke. And then we do the charge result. So I do have a support. Are you committing any supports to this? I could because I'm going to move these two land there to support this. You can do, yeah. Support. Yeah, so you're going to support with that one battalion that's yeah. behind them. And I'll use so, this, I'll attach my general. Okay, I'm not attaching my general. So I'm on minus one. No, casualties minus two. I've now got seven, seven casualties. Yeah, and three casualties in the general. Oh, right, yeah. So that's minus three, and you've got a general which make minus it minus four. Yeah. So the French get a six. Eleven. Oh, that's victory. not good. So that's victory. So this lot of French are thrown back. Um, I take an extra 1d3 casualties and retreat. So I take one more casualty. Okay. That unit behind it is unformed 
and they both go back 18 inches. Both of them? Yeah. Okay. Well, the other one goes back 12 and the other one 18. Yeah. All right, so we've done the movement. Uh, the French charge over here was thrown back and they formed up uh, on that uh, remaining formed unit. The units that retired last turn have reformed. We've charged in with two battalions. The Landwehr did charge. We need to do the charge oh, results yeah. for that, Charlie. And uh, Charlie's moved his other Landwehr up to support the village as the two musketeer battalions were supporting one another. All right, so in the combat down here, I've taken no casualties, you've taken two. I only caused one in the yeah. turn, so that has no effect. So as you say, it's a straight roll off. What did you get? I got an 11. That's cogs. That's a bit that cheeky. That All right, I'll re-roll that one if you want, if you insist. An eight against a six. So that's a minus I two to one. you. You charged, didn't you? So you stop and volley 1d6. You cause one casualty to me. All right, uh, and those two stop. All right, now it'll be um, normal firing. Prussians to go first. Turn 11, French charging in again. Uh, let's just check one and one casualty. Yep, so indeed eight casualties. Oh, French no. cause four. I've done one. Okay, you are kicked out. One French battalion drives into the village. All right, so the French are finally into the village on turn 11. Oh, these two will be better. But uh, Charlie's just ruining the fact he doesn't have infantry assault in to counterattack, so that will be priority orders for the Prussians. This is turn 12. This is the last turn. These Can Dad two. pull off a victory? There is a chance is <laughs> that Dad might beat the boys today. Let's see if they can take the village. No, I'll put the casualty on the other battalion. So uh, let's see what happens. Turn 12. This is the decider. Right, so I just charged this Landwehr battalion and Charlie did indeed just roll a double six. The only fortunate thing for me is it is half effect. So I only take three casualties. Um, and what's your destiny test? You roll a four, so steady the buffs. You recover a casualty. Let's go to the charge results. Um, I took three casualties, so that'd be minus two on my dice roll. I get a 10, Six. so eight, so I win by two, um, so I melee with a land, the Landwehr melee unformed. Crunch, crunch roll off in the game, I get five dice uh, in the village, Charlie gets eight because he's attacking with two battalions. Let's see how the French do. Oh yes! French get one. I did five, I've taken it. He's taken the village back and the French battalion retreat and fall back out of the village and I don't get to fight, fight again. Right, that's it, that's the end of turn 12. And despite uh, my protestations of upcoming victory, as we can see, the Landwehr are back in the possession of the village. They threw the French out, uh, caused massive casualties on that French battalion that had surged into the village this turn. And they have gained enough time for the Prussian army to continue to redeploy. So the Prussians hold on for long enough. This mass of French infantry, despite their early success, against the Prussian cavalry were unable to take the village. The Landwehr have counterattacked and taken it again. I'm sure in another couple of turns this mass of French infantry will break through, but uh, this was a delaying action and they've seen it through successfully. Hope you enjoy the game. Look forward to seeing your, seeing your comments. Do remember to subscribe and I'll see you again next time.